there are a lot of methodologies out there, so it's easy to get methodology fatigue. Like, what exactly is a permanent note? How do you know when a note is atomic enough? How do you decide when a note is evergreen versus seedling or whatever? I don't know if it's just my own chaotic personality, but my tendency is to learn those methodologies and then chuck them all out the window and do whatever I feel like. And that works out pretty well for me, actually, even if what I feel like changes from moment to moment. But that also makes it a little bit more difficult to explain to people when they ask what I do. So instead of trying to explain, in this video, I'm just going to take you with me while I'm trying to learn something, a particular topic that I'd like to wrap my head around. I'm going to talk you through what I'm thinking, what, why I make the decisions that I make, and also the plugins that I use to consolidate information. For context, I am a developer advocate at a company called Grafana Labs, which is based around observability, but my personal experience is in performance testing and engineering. Today, what I want to learn is eBPF, which is Extended Berkeley Packet Filter. My main tool for researching any topic, really, is Readwise using their new product, Reader, which I've been beta testing for almost a year. Unfortunately, I can't show you that part. It's not quite public yet. So I'm just going to show you how that looks like when it's already been imported into Obsidian. So I usually would start off with opening up the search pane here and then looking for notes that I haven't processed yet. I use a tag called TVZ to Versetlen, but you can use like hashtag inbox or, or something else. I also do have a workspace already. Um, so I'm opening up my workspaces here. I have a TVZ one that I'm just going to load. And that automatically brings up all of the notes that I haven't processed yet. So in this case, I only want the ones that have eBPF and I'm going to collapse the results. So now there's, this is a more manageable list because these are the ones that I have yet to process. I also like to change the sort order to new to old. I always start with the newest ones because those are probably the most relevant to what I'm doing now. So I'm just going to start with the first one and see how we go. And I'll hide that pane. Now this one looks like it's some sort of slideshow that I've also added as a PDF. This is by someone named Anton Rodriguez. So I'm looking through this. Um, this one is specifically related to Kafka, which isn't my focus. I guess I need to talk about what eBPF is first. I'm going to open up my eBPF page. I actually do already have some preliminary things. Like I think this is uh, one, one article and then after that, just conversations with some colleagues. I also participated in this hackathon on a very need to know basis because I mean, it's a hackathon. It was really quick, like a two day turnaround or something like that. I learned just a little bit more about eBPF, but still I feel like that knowledge isn't consolidated yet and I haven't quite put it in my notes yet. So I'm just going to watch this video and to try and remind myself what, what I knew then that I do not know now. Okay. So I think that to start with, eBPF is a way to do monitoring, but it's a different, there are almost like two different approaches to monitoring. The first is instrumentation. Take a screen cap of this slide. Of course, I'm going to cite him. Um, this is really illustrating instrumentation. So I'm going to go into my monitoring page. Uh, I'll add today's date there. And I've got, what should you monitor? How should you monitor? Hmm. And here I'll put uh, approaches to monitoring. I'm using just a smaller monitor here so that you can still manage to see it. But typically I would put this on my much larger external monitor. So this is a completely new note. So instrumentation is an approach to I'm just creating a citation here that I can copy, and then I'm going to put it here. 
And I'll also put the citation for this image, Anton Rodriguez. That way, when it's being viewed, because I'll probably publish this at some point, there'll be a little citation there that says that this is not something that I created. Here in instrumentation, I'll probably also put as a parent monitoring and siblings, EBPF. So now I've got something on instrumentation, then I'll say a newer approach to monitoring leverages EBPF. I also really like what he did here to illustrate EBPF. So I'm going to get that and put it in eBPF as well. Okay, okay, now I feel like, uh, all right, I have products using eBPF. This could really be commercial products using eBPF, and this is tools, eBPF tools. I don't think I really wanna to get too detailed in this. I just want to know what these things are. If at some point I wanna to learn to use these, tools, then I'll probably go back and flesh it out. But honestly, for now, I'm probably more likely to use these commercial products. So I'm just going to note them here. BPF trace, kubectl trace. Oh, this is Cloudflare's eBPF exporter. eBPF exporter by Cloudflare. Okay. Thank you, Anton. This was very useful. I'm then going to remove that TVZ tag and then keep going. So I have one fewer thing to process. Okay, this is from Odysseus Lamtidis, whom I've actually spoken to. Good guy. Okay, eBPF doesn't offer any new functionality. I'm going to add a citation here. I'm going to add a section here that's like, what's the deal with eBPF? Interestingly, eBPF doesn't add any more functionality compared to instrumentation. What it adds is ease of use. That's what, that's what that's saying to me, that it's not actually about new things that you can do with the help of eBPF. It's more like, hey, these are things that we had to instrument before, and now eBPF just takes care of it. So I'm going to attribute that to Odysseus and I'm going to add it there. I think I've gotten that one as well. Thank you, Odysseus. And next one, Netflix is using it. And I definitely want to talk about, uh, maybe I should have a section here for like popular companies using eBPF. Well, I know, Grafine. Aside from, aside from the vendor. So I'll put Netflix. Well, so one of, definitely one of the advantages is this. It consumes less than 1% of CPU and memory resource efficient. Oh, okay. So I already did have highly efficient. Uh, could serve some estimate the overhead, the CPU and memory overhead of eBPF monitoring at 1%. And that's also Netflix. This seems like something that is very relevant to microservices as well. This one's done too. Mm. As an observability trend, all right. Okay, I do have an observability page here. Trends in observability. Okay, so I do just want to add this. Cool, I'd already put eBPF. Okay, this is news to me. This is why I write this stuff because I already put it as a trend. Okay, so I'm going to put continuous profiling here. Don't really know enough about it. I'm just gonna put it there as a placeholder. I think that's totally okay. Unified observability. What does observ unified observability mean? eBPF monitoring may bring companies closer to a unified observability. I don't really know about this. I would have to do more research on it. Parents, observability. Um, if I had to guess, unified observability refers to, look, this might be wrong, but 
this is what I'm taking from it. And this is, this represents my current knowledge or best guess. And I can bet that this is probably still a better guess than if I had come across that term some other time, I'll probably have forgotten that I ever read about it. Okay, remove this and then next one. Okay, so this is getting a little bit long. So I, I actually wanted to get through all of these articles, but apparently that's not going to happen. That's totally fine. What I'm going to do is I'm getting a bit weary of the subject, so I'm just going to leave it there for now and then try to consolidate what I have already written. I think the main thing here is to stress the difference between eBPF monitoring and instrumentation. I am learning now that eBPF isn't just about monitoring, but I'm just still going to focus on the eBPF monitoring part. So one thing that really helps me is by, I've written a lot of text already, so maybe I want to try and create something more visual. I'll start with instrumentation. I really like this, but I want to create something of mine that is more, well, just when you create it, it like, it means more. So I'm going to create something for eBPF, my own very simplified version of this that really doesn't need to know a lot of this. It's a user space. That's where the application is. Okay, I'm gonna put it here. I'm actually going to use Excaladraw. I'm going to embed, create a drawing and embed it. I do want it in a pop-out window. So this part is pretty boring, so I'm just going to speed it up. I am creating a visual with Excaladraw. Do, 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 do. Okay, so then I'm going to do the same for instrumentation. And I'm going to add my own, I mean, this is just so complicated, right? I don't really, need that. So Excaladra. Okay, so this is this is kind of rough, right? But instrumentation diagram. All right. So what I want to do is tie those two together. I want to say like, hey, the eBPF one was at this level and the instrumentation agent was like at this larger level. But I mean, I could create a visual that's for both of them, but I think I want to create like more of a story. So where's the best way to put this? Okay, so another thing that I like for looking at things visually is Excalibrain. So in the pop-out window, this is monitoring. I'm at instrumentation right now. So I do actually want to get into observability. Observability. So this is particularly in monitoring. Um, I guess where it should be is in the approaches for monitoring. So I think it's here that I need to do like difference between monitoring uh, instrumentation and eBPF. This is going to be a little bit different. I'm actually going to use the advanced slides plugin. So I'm going to open up the preview here. It's blank right now. What I want to do is create some sort of story. Okay. Okay. Monitoring is important. Voiceover Nicole here again. What I'm doing here is I'm using advanced slides to create kind of like a guided story to explain what's happening here with instrumentation and eBPF. Now I have the slide preview up on the right side and I'm also embedding the images that I created with Excalidra so that I'm bringing those images kind of like as if they were atomic notes but into the advanced slide story. Here's something like a quick slideshow, I guess you could say, but it's really just a story summarizing what I've learned. Monitoring is really important in determining what's happening in a system. Usually systems are opaque unless you have proper monitoring, but monitoring can be really difficult to set up when systems are complex. In fact, the more complex a system is, for example, um, microservices based architectures, the more complicated monitoring will have to be as well. The traditional approach to monitoring is instrumentation. If we've got this application here, let's say this is an entire component. 
in the user space, there are applications and the instrumentation agent sits on the node or on the component and it passes information on. And the new approach to monitoring is eBPF. It works on a lower level within the kernel. So instead of at this level, the shaded blue one, eBPF works just on the kernel level, which means that you don't need many of these robots. You just need to have eBPF programs running here and listening to everything that goes on there. Some of the advantages of eBPF are that it is event-driven, meaning it doesn't always have to be on. It sits there in the kernel and listens for certain events that occur. That makes it highly efficient. It is CPU and memory effective. Like the utilization has been conservatively judged by Netflix to be about 1%, which is pretty much unheard of. It's also more secure because the way that it is set up is that it, it does allow programs that run in the kernel, but it doesn't allow full root access. It's kind of like JavaScript as a layer on kernel programs to make them a little bit more easy to a little bit more approachable, but also more secure. So you aren't going to be able to wreak a lot of havoc using eBPF. It has a lot of these security features built in. It also allows continuous delivery because eBPF programs don't require changes to the actual kernel code. The eBF programs can be shipped and changed independently without breaking anything else. I hope that was a useful look into how I process notes. Please don't take this as some sort of tutorial on eBPF. If it wasn't already obvious, I'm not sure what I'm doing with that. I'm just trying to put and consolidate the information that I've got into my note-taking system. And I'm sure that there are a lot of errors in that. I didn't even finish processing all of the articles that I had, I've already read about eBPF. So this is less like a final product and more just like a snapshot in time. And when I learn new things about eBPF, then I'll go back and change everything else. That's the thing about note-taking. If you ever have a final product of notes, then it's not really going to be dynamic enough to change with you as you change. I hope that this was useful. I mentioned at the beginning that I use Readwise to get all of my articles into Obsidian. Check out this video if you wanna know more about that. And as for the rest of the process, take what you find useful, try it out, and then get rid of everything that doesn't make sense to you. Don't take this as the best way to do it. It's just how I felt like doing it today. Thank you for watching. Salamat ha!